What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, May 18th, and we've got the mother load today, sort of. Uh, 15 games on the slate. Could be just a monster one, but there's a lot of weather we need to worry about. Um, speaking of weather last night, how'd that go for you in the Cubs-Braves game? Full Braves stack, and yeah, my one-offs did well, so my pitching was pretty good. So it wasn't great seeing that game get postponed. Uh, I don't know. Took took the chance, and I think they probably could have played it, but that's all right. You know, that's baseball. I took the risk. Hope you guys didn't take the risk with me if you watched the live stream. Uh, but it, the ownership was right, so I'd probably do it again if I had to. It's just, it just sucks when you have a, a five-man stack and the game gets postponed. <laughs> Yeah, I had quite a bit of Cubs last night, and that didn't go well. But, you know, you, some days you're going to be the hammer, some days you're going to be the nail, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we would definitely want to pay attention to weather tonight, because we've got uh, similar shenanigans uh, that could go down, specifically with this first game, which most likely won't happen, which is kind of a bummer, but we'll get into that right now. Uh, Dodgers and Nats. Dodgers with a 2.8 run implied total. Nats, 4.2. It's a 67% chance to win for the Nats. Ross Stripling going for the Dodgers. Max Scherzer going for the Nats. As of right now, uh, the way that the weather looks, I don't expect this game to happen. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit regardless. There's not too much to talk about one way or the other. But this one's looking like it's going to be relatively damp from five o'clock at least until midnight so if you're planning on relying on max scherzer tonight you probably want to look a different direction i love yeah. scherzer tonight obviously but it's gonna be hard to pull off right i'm i'm right there with you 14k like i hate paying more than like 13 for a pitcher even in the best of spots but scherzer's probably someone i would play for 14k if the weather was right here uh so he's probably saving me from myself. Like a fourteen thousand dollar pitcher, how much upside do you really have? I mean, he could go out and get forty five here on DK, and I I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Um, but the game's probably not going to be on the slate. So I do like Scherzer and the Washington bats if it for some reason clears up. But what is going on in DC? It seems like it's been raining for like eight days straight there. Trying to flush out I, that president. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't sorry, be the worst. Sorry, <laughs> political jokes. That's all I got at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't really get to too much from a Nats bat. Uh, for those that are new to this, I've just redone the sheet. So I do, a, I do a crunch before we start the show and add it to the sheet. So I have my personal ownerships right now um, in here for both teams. Didn't get to a ton of, of Nats, just a, a, a couple runs of stacks. Uh, hit a ton of Scherzer on both sites. I actually got a lot of Rush Stripling on DraftKings, which I don't really know how to rectify in my head. If this game were going to happen, like we, I would have to talk about it. But 4,200 on DK, um, only a 4.2 run implied total for the Nats. Uh, Stripling can miss some bats, but he's more of a reliever than a starter. So... I wouldn't expect him to go terribly deep into this game. I think I have him in for like five and two thirds, which might even be an overestimation. But on a 15 game slate, like he's oddly in a decent spot at that price where you can have a couple lines of him and, you know, hope for the best. Did you yeah, like I mean, him stripling at all? I mean, I did. He's just not missing really any bats at all. And the Nationals aren't a team that I like targeting. So I was actually going to target some bats against him if I thought this game was going to happen. Harper, Rendon, and Adams mostly. And then Turner's leading off, 4,800. Righty-righty, uh, it's fine. But, again, I'm not 
convinced this game has a great chance of going. So yeah, now I'll have to reappropriate twenty uh, percent of Stripling's ownership and twenty one percent of Scherzer's ownership through DK. So that'll look yep. a little bit different come the live stream. But you know, as of right now, every game's happening, so I can't just disregard it yet. Not at nine o'clock. Right. Uh, and then I wasn't looking at anything on the Dodgers side. Literally zero ownership. So. Yeah, absolutely no bats for the Dodgers against Scherzer. I, Scherzer, if this game for some reason plays, Scherzer is going to just mow him down, I think. Like, this would be like a 15-strikeout game for him. I, like, I think he, had, uh, he would have a really good chance of doing that here. Yeah, I mean, Taylor K is at a decent rate. Peterson K is at a decent rate. Gondal, Bellinger, Kemp, Forsyth, like all yeah. these guys K, you know, at a pretty sizable number. Nothing, like, crazy, nothing like Joey Gallo type crazy, but just at least average or slightly more than average, which means you're in for a long night against Max Scherzer. Yep. Or a quick one, because it might just be three pitches and your ass is back on the pine. <laughs> Very well, it could be. Anyway, Padres and Pirates. Uh, Padres, 3.4 run implied total. Pirates, 3.8. It's a 55% chance to win for the Pirates. Um, Tyson Ross going for San Diego. Ivan Nova going for Pittsburgh. Uh, I like Nova a little bit here, on DK at least. 6,400. Um, you know, it's Padres run total at 3.4, which is pretty low. Nova's not like some major strikeout guy, but uh, this looks like a good spot. The Padres don't really have like the most prolific offense in the world. Uh, weighted runs created plus against righties this year is only 83. They've got a 117 ISO uh, against righties, which is dramatically below league average. Um, so I think Nova can get there from like a an innings perspective as a second starter on on uh, on DK. I'll end up with a bunch of them actually. Um, what do you think about Nova? I mean he. He's someone that I think I would consider for MME for like limited lineups. I I just don't think he's got a ton of upside. It's a good price and a really good matchup. Like the Padres against a righty is a good matchup in general, but Nova just cannot strike out any lefties. Like look at his K rate this year. I'm pretty sure it's under 10. Uh, and so like if the Padres were to roll out six or seven righties for some reason, like if they just were cashing in this game and just – wanted to give the Pirates the win or something or just threw out a terrible lineup, then then Nova would be a guy I'd probably look at. But um, like I'm seeing probably five, maybe six lefties in the lineup against Nova, and I, I just can't go there when it's a lefty-heavy lineup. I mean, that, that makes total sense. Uh, he wouldn't be a guy that I would completely focus on in like a single-entry mm -hmm. tourney, but I think he fits pretty well as uh, a guy to get exposure to. Um, if yeah. you're mass entering anything. Agreed. I don't have him too much on uh, FanDuel where he's a bit more expensive. So I'll have a, a very small trickle of Nova on FanDuel. I need to look this up now. Um, are you looking at any hitters in this game? Because I barely am. Uh, I am not really. Um, so I have respect for what Ross has done lately just like getting ahead of guys getting swinging swings and misses and he looks like a much better pitcher than last year so i'm not really stacking against ross i could see going to dickerson or josh bell or polanco as one-offs but he does have some trouble with lefty power still probably always will so i could see playing those guys as one-offs but it's not really that great of hitting weather 60 degrees wind blowing in so if ross was cheaper he might be a guy i would consider playing here as weird as that sounds but he's 9500 on dk so it's kind of just an avoid all around maybe a, a pirate's bat uh one thing to point out uh he's not available on either site but the pirates are calling up uh, a prospect austin meadows and he should get the start tonight um hmm. so he's like a you know top 100 prospect big time pedigree uh former top 10 pick um, so he should be in the lineup tonight and uh, making his major league debut. And he's another lefty. Padres are going to be tough against lefties for the rest of the, or righties for the rest of the year. They got a lefty heavy lineup, so 
just adds to that. I don't think we have anything else to talk about here, so we'll move on. A's and J's. Uh, A's with a 4.9 run implied total. Blue Jays 5.1. It's a 52% chance to win uh, for the Blue Jays. Brett Anderson going for Oakland. Marco Estrada going for Toronto. Um, I don't know why Brett Anderson's name is not being highlighted here. I think it, my highlight goes down further. Anyway, uh, a little bit of Marco Estrada on DK, but honestly, there's not much to go for from a pitching perspective. Uh, this is a game where you should have a bunch of hitting. Uh, are you looking at either pitcher? No. Uh, I want to target against both of these pitchers, really. So Anderson is getting teed off against righties like 94 mile an hour average exit velocity he like he's just getting smoked and the blue jays have a bunch of good ones donaldson smoke uh solarte russell martin tay oscar hernandez if he's in the lineup i like this blue jays stack a bunch and then estrada is getting teed off against righties like they're just killing him so i like some of the righty power here Davis and Matt Chapman, and then uh, you can throw in Jed Lowry and Matt Olson. Like, I could get to a four or five man stack for either side. I like all hitting in this game pretty much. Yeah, the A's are my top stack on FanDuel, actually. Um, one through eight, I'll go the whole way. So, Semi and Joyce Lowry, Chris Davis, Matt Olson, Chapman, Piscotty, Dustin Fowler. I've got bits of all of those guys. Uh, Piscotti is the guy that I have the least of in this particular set. And then on DK, I do have them a little bit, but one, two, three, four, five, six. They're my seventh most owned stack on DraftKings. Uh, still like them, um, but it's just, it's a little bit more muted. I'll have an overwhelming amount of A's on FanDuel. I'd be shocked if they're not one of my top two stacks by the time we get to uh, closer to lock. Yeah, I, I love both of these. And if the A's are going to go under-owned, which they might, again, I liked them last night, and they came in pretty low-owned. My boy Matt Olson's heating up. Uh, so I like him again tonight, and Estrada's not a guy I'm worried about targeting against at all. I have Matt Olson with the 11th highest chance to hit a home run today. Yeah, I have that in my sheet now, so I could pick my Diddy Dong guy easier. Yeah, he, Olsen, he's got huge power. And yeah. He's finally heating up a little bit after starting off pretty poorly for the first month. So do you like, do you like the Blue Jays more than the A's on DK? Um, probably a little bit more. Okay. I think the pricing... It's it looks similar just eyeballing it like the the top five or six for each team. Yeah. So I have them very I, similar. Yeah, Anderson against righties is like just getting smoked. So uh, like Donaldson, I think has one of the best chances to hit a home run tonight. Um, Russell Martin's awesome play at catcher for thirty three hundred. Like I like all these guys on both sides. I've got Donaldson as the seventh most likely home run tonight. Yeah. Could be the uh, your dong pick tonight. Could be. Uh, yeah, so I like a little bit of the the Blue Jays on both sites. I really, really like the A's on FanDuel. But this is a game where you want to get uh, a decent amount of hitting. Um, Josh Donaldson looking like uh, a gem for the Blue Jays today in that righty-lefty matchup. Yeah, and these both these teams, well, the Blue Jays, I think, will be popular just because you see Smoke, 3,700, Solarte, dual position eligibility for 36, and then Russell Martin for 33. So they just, they fill a lot of spots that you want to fill, um, and they're cheap. Yeah, couldn't agree more. All righty, Cubs and Reds, uh, another game where we might see some weather. I would expect this game to start late. But it looks like it should clear out later on in the night. So uh, you'd be looking, you know, a game's supposed to start at 7.10 Eastern. I'd think more like 8.15, 8.30 is a, a better scenario for when that game actually starts. Anyway, uh, 5.4 run implied total for the Cubs. 
4.1 for the Reds. It's a 63% chance to win for the Cubs. John Lester going for Chicago. And uh, Homer Bailey going for Cincinnati. Not going to get too much Homer Bailey. And by too much, I mean any whatsoever. Uh, Lester's fine. I'll have like a two or three lines of him on FanDuel. Maybe a similar amount on DK. Uh, I just... While the matchup is good against the Reds, I just don't totally trust John Lester. Um, so he'll be just a guy that gets rotated in with the rest of everyone today. When there's, you know, 30 starters ignoring weather, uh, sometimes you need to differentiate a little bit. So a little bit of Lester, but that's it. I, I just want a ton of Cubs bats. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have that much respect for the Reds lineup. There are a bunch of lefties in there. Lester is very good at, against lefties. So, I mean, I, I get it. I certainly wasn't going to play him yesterday against the Braves. But I do like Suarez against Lester, and that's about it for the Reds' bats. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, the highest ownership percentage I have on anybody on either site from the Reds is 1%. So, uh I'm not looking yeah. at Reds bats. I'm just, I want everybody on the Cubs that I can get. Uh, on FanDuel, Zobris, Bryant, Rizzo, Baez, Schwarber looks great. I'll use Almora and Russell if I have to. Um, I won't have a ton of Wilson Contreras on FanDuel, but on DK, um, you know, he'll be maxing out to my, uh, my max ownership to get a catcher in the lineup. Uh, I have everybody on DK as well, so... Cubs are one of my favorite stacks. Uh, they are currently my third most used stack on FanDuel and my number one stack on DraftKings. Yeah, they should be. I mean, Homer Bailey against this Cubs lineup. Bailey's giving up 50% hard contact against righties almost this year. Uh, this XFIP is way up over five, and it's a great hitter's park. So it's good hitting weather as long as it's not raining a ton yeah but obviously keep an eye on this game you never know when games will get postponed um so who knows but i like all these cubs too especially bryant and Contreras. those are my two favorites yeah and then bryant, spotlight hitter tonight yeah i i love that i think he's he's got to be one of the most expensive players in the slate right um, 5600 i would guess yeah he's that's a, not there on dk but can give you that answer two seconds. All right, it's longer than two seconds, but whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. He's an awesome play regardless. Well, now I just want to know. <laughs> uh, he is the third most expensive player behind Betts and Trout. Okay. Yeah, so the highest-priced mortal player, Fuck, you could say. Yeah, for real. D Trout's been... Hmm. Something else this year. So so is Betts. Betts has been going nuts. I think Trout has like a substantial lead in war right now. Oh, yeah, he does. He's on pace to have the best war of all time. Did you read that article today or yesterday? Uh, I don't remember. I, I read it this morning. I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I think it was a couple Betts, days. Oddly enough, at least on fan graphs. He might be higher on baseball reference. Yeah. Either way, they're both raking. Yep. Yeah, uh, get all the Cubs you can. Um, don't play the Reds. I think that's the summary, right? Pretty much, except for Suarez. I do like him a bunch, but yeah, don't listen, that's it. Jake. Come on. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine using Suarez as a one-off on a 15-game slate. Oh, I can. He's going to be low-owned, and dude, he just he just rakes against lefties. That's a good point. He he so. does rake against lefties. I have his split as a plus six percent on here now. Ooh, that's another thing that I have on here. Um, quick summary of this. Ooh, let's swing it back to the Cubs. Uh, I have a split percentage in here. Um, so if you're familiar with sabermetrics at all, uh, Tango Tiger wrote the book, which is a, you know a statistical book about baseball a while back. In it, he outlines uh, how to calculate platoon splits for people. I also wrote an article about this on Reddit. If you search my name, uh, you'd be able to find that. It's called, like, managing platoon splits or something. Anyway, uh, so this would be the split bonus to his, like, WOBA 
if uh, they're facing righties or lefties. So in this case, Suarez gets a 6% bump to his average Woba by facing a lefty. And like if, for example, Scooter Jeanette gets a 8% decrease to his average Woba from, um, from facing a lefty. So this is in here now, so we can just eyeball guys that have like big splits or small splits or whatever's going on. Stuff like 8% for Jeanette is, is pretty big, but that's also pretty standard for lefty on lefty. You'll see uh, Shebler, Jeanette, Jesse Winker all have big time dramatic issues with lefty lefty. And lefty lefty is the, the most difficult matchup for a hitter. Um, yep. So that all makes sense. But I have that on there now so we can get an idea of guys with big platoon splits. I like it. Yeah. And it, it's a good thing for, you know, someone like Shebler who has a big platoon split hitting sixth. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that, like, if Lester's going late, Shebler gets pinch hit for a righty. Um, further yeah. down in the lineup, lefty-lefty matchup. That's the sort of stuff where people get pulled. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Diamondbacks and Mets. Diamondbacks. 2.9 run implied total. Mets, 3.7. It's a 61% chance to win for the Mets. Zach Godley going for Arizona. Jake DeGrom going for the Mets. Um, love DeGrom tonight. Uh, with Scherzer out, DeGrom will be my number one pitcher uh, with a bullet. Uh, really no way that doesn't happen unless somehow this game just falls off the map, which the weather looks absolutely perfect. Uh, so I'm going to end up with as much DeGrom as I could possibly get up to my exposure limits. And uh, I actually like Godley quite a bit on DraftKings. Uh, 8,100. Uh, he's a guy that can miss bats. Mets implied total of 3.7 is still super low. Um, I don't have a problem using either of these guys on DraftKings. Uh, I like Godley way more than I would have expected to like him on a full slate. Tell me where you're at pitching-wise. Yeah, I like both sides. Um, Godley, Godley's just my boy. I love playing him. Uh, I like watching him pitch. He, but that's not why he's a good play. Uh, the <laughs> Mets are a really good matchup. They get they give up a bunch of swinging strikes. They're top five for the year. They're top five over the last two weeks. Um, they're chasing a lot lately. Like he's he's had like really weird starts like he's he started against the Dodgers four times and like three of them have not gone well so maybe they just have his number I'm not worried about him being unhealthy or anything and I think he could have a really really nice start here against this Mets lineup that's pretty watered down um so I love Godley for 8100 probably will be a spotlight pitcher I'm a little worried about DeGrom for 9800 it's a really good price and He's going to be really chalky, especially if there's going to be no Scherzer. He'll be the he highest owned pitcher, right? Yeah. I, I mean, unless, well, even with Scherzer on the slate, I, I bet he would be just for a $4,200 discount on DK. Yeah. He left after 45 pitch first inning last game. Um, his velocity was down like one mile per hour across the board. Um, and, and At least it was on his fastball. I don't remember if it was on every pitch, but... I'm a little bit scared of him, but the run total, like the lineup that the Diamondbacks are going to roll out, they strike out a bunch against righties. Um, he's going to be hard for me to avoid, like like regardless of all those concerns I have about him. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I don't expect Godley to be that owned. Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Which is kind of appealing to me. <clears throat> yeah, I like Godley. I think that he could have his first like i don't know has he had like a, a really great start yet this year i don't think he has yet shouldn't you know that as the president of his fan club well i mean I, yeah he did have one really <laughs> awesome start it was against the giants when i was just targeting against the giants every single time for the first like three weeks of the season so his second start seven innings nine k's yeah. like that's he's only had uh, really that, one that of those Padre start eight k's one walk yeah but he only he doesn't, five and a third that's kind of yeah. the problem he doesn't really go very deep. Like seven innings is kind of his limit because he does fall behind guys. But if he's getting ahead early, um, I could see him going six or seven, going a K per inning here. And $8,100, um, not going to be highly owned, I don't think. 
like that's you, you definitely got my interest there for a guy like Godley. Agreed. Uh, no hitters whatsoever. I I don't see any that I like. Do you? No, I have zeros across the board for all their ownership. Yeah. That makes it easy. Orioles and Red Sox. Orioles four point two run implied total. Red Sox five point four. It's a sixty two percent chance <clears throat> to win uh, for the Red Sox. Alex Cobb going for the Orioles. Drew Pomeranz going for the Red Sox. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of Pomeranz on FanDuel, less of him on DraftKings. Uh, I won't have any Alex Cobb on either site. But, you know, Pomeranz is a guy that I'm fine with targeting. Orioles haven't been anything special against lefties so far this year, which is weird considering how much they lean right. Um, So... Yeah, that's a that's a direction that I'm going to be going. Uh, probably some Pomeranz. Did you look at him at all? I feel like we I, never talk about Pomeranz. I didn't dig into Pomeranz too much just because it's probably going to be eight or nine righties for the Orioles. And, I mean, I think Pomeranz is an okay pitcher. I don't think Fenway's a particularly good park for him. Just with, like, going up against righty power and the green monster right there, it's so short. Um... So I'm probably off Pomeranz unless I dig into him later and find something very encouraging. But I don't see anything I, I love from him right now. Um, and then, like, Boston's going to be chalk, right? Or one, one of the chalk stacks. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, Red Sox are my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel, my third most owned stack on DK. I mean, you can you can make a case that it's second. They're tied with the Braves, uh, so I'm gonna have a lot of Red Sox on both sides, uh, as most people should. They're in a great spot. Um, so, Betts, Benintendi, Hanley, JD. Uh, I don't really like Bogarts all that much on Fanduel, but he plays pretty well on DK. Uh, Eduardo Nunez looks great. Um, Red Sox X is just gonna be pretty popular. They've they've got one of the highest end groups of talent on the on the slate 5.4 run implied total tied for first with the cubs it's hard to avoid them yeah i I, and so the red sox are awesome against righties this year one of the highest wrc pluses in the league um and then i have cobb as like the best pitcher to stack against on the slate just how like from my grades that i that i do for each pitcher and he like he can't strike anybody out, walks guys, gives up a bunch of hits. His whip is 188 this year. Um, bunch of hard contact. He's probably gotten a little bit unlucky with his batted balls. Like I don't think he's like the worst pitcher ever. Um, man, the Orioles have a, him and Tillman. That's three out of five or two out of five starts. You're just getting club. So yeah, uh, it's too bad for the Orioles. They got to run those two guys out, but. Uh, I think Cobb gets rocked here. The Red Sox. The the only problem with this game is the weather for the Red Sox. Forty nine degrees, a little bit of wind blowing in, so that's a little bit concerning. But I love all these Sox bats regardless. Same. Uh, I like a little bit of the Orioles on DraftKings. Uh, Adam Jones, Machado, and Scope in particular uh, all look pretty good. I got them in a decent amount of lines. Danny Valencia, too, uh, getting some ownership. I'll, I can see myself with some some Orioles stats against Pomeranz. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like Machado and Scope, but I'm probably not stacking the Orioles. They've just been awful. Like, they just they couldn't hit David Price yesterday. Like, mm, probably not stacking them up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will... I think it's more just a price thing on draft yeah. than anything else. Because I'm just getting basically those four guys, Jones, Machado, Scope, and Valencia. I think they fit perfectly with something. And that makes sense. You know, you're getting a second baseman, a third baseman, yeah. a shortstop, and an outfielder. Uh, it really makes it easy to fit other stacks along with them. And yeah, I agree. And Machado is incredible. Yeah. Marlins and Braves. Uh, Marlins, 3.8 run implied total. Braves, 5.2. It's a 64% chance to win 
for the Braves. Dan Straley going for Miami. Sean Newcomb going for Atlanta. Uh, I don't really recommend Newcomb. I'll have him in one or two lines as a uh, sort of low on flyer since the Braves are such big favorites. Um, but this game is more bats for me than anything else. I just... I think Newcomb's overpriced. Newcomb, yeah, Newcomb's really overpriced on DK, 11-5. So I don't think I can go to him. Like, I like probably Godley and a few other guys ahead of him, like DeGrom. Um, and then if I'm going up this high, I'd probably just go to Charlie Morton in a bad matchup just because I think he's a better pitcher right now. Yeah. Um, he's got way higher upside in a bad matchup. But... I think Newcomb pitches well. I'm not really targeting against him with the Marlins. On the other side, though, Straley is really, really struggling, giving up hard contact, 50% in his first three starts. He just started against the Braves in his last start, and I was looking through his, like, batted ball log against some of these Braves, and, like, a lot of lineouts, flyouts, a lot of the word sharply in, <laughs> in those logs. So... And he, like, if you look on paper, the, the start was fine. I think he went, like, five innings and gave up two or three runs. Uh, yeah, five innings, two earned runs, five strikeouts. So it looks like he pitched well, but <clears throat> the contact he gave up was very, very hard. So I'm, once again, in on the Braves. Uh, I'm not holding it against them that they got postponed yesterday. Uh, so I'm... I love the Braves. I think they're probably my favorite stack. If you consider ownership, I don't think they'll be one of the two highest owned stacks. And that's really, really attractive to me. Well, they are my second highest owned stack on DraftKings. And for the first time in, I don't know how long, I love the Braves tonight. Uh, love Albies, love Acuna, love Freeman. Freeman, uh, he has the highest projection for me today on FanDuel. Second highest projection on DraftKings. Um, it's a spotlight hitter. Not huge on Marcakis because I just don't like Marcakis all that much, but Kurt Suzuki popping up a ton as part of the Braves stack. Uh, I wouldn't naturally lean to him, but if you're stacking up the Braves, uh, you're going to need to catch her at some point in time on DraftKings. So I think he's fine. Inciarte uh, gets, his, gets his way in there as well. Um, I love the Braves, especially the top end. Albies, Acuna, and Freeman... I don't think you could really go wrong there. Yeah, I am just all in on the Braves once again. So righties, lefties, Acuna, Albies, like I'll play Suzuki, Enciarte. Um, all these guys can steal. Well, maybe not Suzuki, but all these, most of these guys can steal on Straley too. He's like average against or average at holding runners. So. I, I love the Braves. This one does have some weather concerns too, though, right? Yeah, this is another one where it might get a little wonky. Uh, it's not going to start on time, or at least I would be very surprised if it started on time, at least based on the way it looks now. Uh, if they have a bit of a delay, I think they might be able to get it in. But I think this is the one you need to pay attention to the most. Like, the Nats game seems like you don't really need to pay attention to it. It's they're just screwed. And the Cubs game seems to me like it's going to get in with a delay. The Braves one is the one where I'm just going to shrug my shoulders. I think it could go either way. So you really need to pay attention to weather from that 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock window. Come to the live stream where we'll talk about it. And uh, yeah, use your discretion there. I'll have Braves in my lineup up until 6.30, barring any news. Yeah, uh, I man, do you think they're going to postpone another game? Like, uh, I, it would have to be really bad to postpone two in a row, right? I don't know. I don't know. How many how many Nats games just got postponed? Yeah, but, like, th it doesn't even look like there's even a window to play these Nats games. It seems like it's been raining for forever. But yeah, I, don't, I don't know. You, you got to pay attention to it. Do you like any of the Marlins at all? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I get to uh, enough of the Marlins on DraftKings that it's it's piquing my interest. Prado, Real Muto, Castro, and Mabin in particular as four righty bats against the lefty Newcomb. Um, 
You know, this is like in the, you know, they're all in like the 7, 8, Prado 11% range. Prado with the revenge narrative going against the Braves, I guess. I don't know. I'm just making that shit up. But I think they look like a decent alternative. I wouldn't want too much of it unless Newcomb's ownership is higher than I would expect. If Newcomb yeah. is owned like I expect him to be owned, then I'm not really fond of the Marlins. But if people are going to pay up for Newcomb with Scherzer out, then I think I like it a little bit more. Because Newcomb has a lot of trouble finding the plate sometimes. Yeah, he definitely does. Uh, he can be wild at times. So, I don't know. I'll probably be off the Marlins just because I don't have a lot of lineups to work with. And I do like Newcomb as a pitcher. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got. If I'm being specific, I have the Marlins as my eighth most owned stack. You can say maybe say ninth. So, like, <clears throat> it's not as if I'm recommending you know, them as a priority. But I am surprised how easily they fit into some things. They've got guys at the right positions. I think a lot of that has to do with Real Muto being like a decent catcher, getting a righty-lefty matchup um, brings him into the fold a little bit more. Mm. All righty. Brewers and Twins. Uh, Brewers, 4.1 run implied total. Twins, 4.7. It's a 57% chance to win for the Twins. Brent Suter going for Milwaukee. Kyle Gibson going for Minnesota. I have neither pitcher at all, but you're going to tell me you like Gibson. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he's 8,800. Kyle Gibson. Uh, good hitting weather here. A little bit of wind blowing in from right, though, which I like. Um, so Gibson just, he's, he's had really good swing and miss stuff over the last few starts. Uh, just swinging strike rates by, like, you can just look up his game log. So 17.7, 19, 6.2, okay, that's not good. 13.7, 14.1 over his last five starts. That is really, really impressive to me. He's getting a bunch of whiffs, too. Like, I believe he's top 15 in whiffs per swing this year. I looked it up yesterday. Uh, let me just do a quick search. Yeah, he's 15th in whiffs per swing. Yeah. And against the Brewers, there's no brawn. That is a right-handed bat, but now they're going to get a, a worse right-handed bat in there and Hernan Perez or, or someone else along those lines. Um, I'm not really scared of anyone from the right side for the Brewers. And, yeah, I like Gibson. So maybe I don't love the price, but I'll play him at low ownership for sure. Yeah, I don't expect, uh, I don't expect him to have any ownership whatsoever. Uh, it, it wouldn't take much to get above the field there. It's just a weird price point for him. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine wanting to spend $700 more than Godley. Like, right. I, de I definitely but, like Godley more than I like Gibson tonight. You could play them both. You could play them both. You shouldn't. I might. <laughs> of course you I might play them both. <laughs> Such a Twins homer. I don't even like the Twins. Oh, no. They're going to think I'm a Twins homer. But... I'm gonna say that almost every day now, so we'll be, we'll beat yeah. that into the people's heads. Yeah, no, they can think I'm a Twins homer. The twins suck, though. Like, I mean, I'm just you're just gonna be a homer for like multiple options. The Twins is really easy because you'll have a, a, a real hard time talking your way out of that one. Yeah, um, but like you're also a godly homer. I don't really know how to uh, to like make that up any further, but I'll just say Got it. Because whatever Godly's you say just... goes, it's the internet. But as soon as it's out into the air, it's 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 real. Yeah, it's exactly. So Godley's my boy. I'll gladly take ownership of Godley. I love that guy. I love the way he looks. He's just he's a, he's just the goat. I just love that Godley. So can we take a second to to pause and talk about how good James Shields is? Dude, I what did I say yesterday? I don't he, know. Did he, didn't we say he was gonna suck? <laughs> no, no, no. I said I think I have. I could pull up my notes here, but I said. I even said on the live stream too, like I could see him missing bats here and just surviving. And I wasn't worried, like I wasn't worried about him getting smashed yesterday. So, I mean, Seven yeah, whatever. I was third, right yesterday, but one earned run, eight Ks. I'm fucking James Shields, I'm over this shit with him. And he was throwing a Dude. gem in that last one against the Cubs. It just it went squirrely late, but he had that no-no going for a while. <laughs> or was that that's two why I was games so ago against Minnesota. 
I think that was a couple of games ago. That's why I was so mad about the Braves. Like everyone was on the Rangers, everyone was on Gallo. They busted, and my one-offs were good. My pitching was good, and then the Braves got postponed. I didn't even have a chance to to have the late comeback with the the late start or whatever. So uh, that sucked, but yeah. I felt like I was I was on everything else. We didn't touch on any hitters here. I have no ownership to the Twins or Brewers on DraftKings, but I have a trickle of it on FanDuel. Uh, Dozier in particular yeah. looking really good on FanDuel at 3,700. Max Kepler is so bad against lefties that it's a double-digit split percentage, and that didn't fit in the column. So I need to expand the column to show how bad Max Kepler is against lefties. His platoon splits have been insane for his career. Uh, I like Dozier a little bit. I like Byron Buxton a little bit at 2200 on FanDuel. Uh, but these are not two teams that I'm going to have a terribly large amount of. Yeah, just um, just Dozier for me is the only guy I'm really considering. Maybe Escobar, but mostly just Dozier. That's a good price point on DK against the lefty. So I'm not sacking up the Twins. No, maybe I should though. Like five run total, they're gonna get they're gonna be unowned, right? Yeah, I mean, I got zero of them, so... Yeah. I don't see the five-run total here. I mean, Suter's not any sort of great pitcher, but there are a few lefties mixed in this lineup, and Suter's not a guy that's like an auto stack for me, so... No, I mean, Maurer is... While he's still Joe Maurer, not the best against lefties. Kepler, obviously, not great against lefties. Logan Morrison struggles against lefties. Uh, Escobar is fine, but I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think Kepler's a little bit better this year. I think he's kind of a different hitter, so he can hit lefties probably better than what it's showing over the last few years, but I, I get what you're saying. Like, none of these guys really scare you from the left side of the plate. Just Dozier. Yeah. Well, hits from the right side of the plate, so that makes exactly what you just said true. I'm, I'm a moron. Anyway, I was going to let it go. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> I should have let it go. Indians and Astros. Indians, 3.4 run implied total. Astros, 4.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Strohs. Uh, Mike Clevenger going for Cleveland. Charlie Morton going for Houston. Um, I'm going to end up with a little bit of Charlie Morton just because I'll need to fill out the salary, but I don't particularly like him tonight at that price point. Um, he's just a, a way to pay up. Uh, you know, I don't expect his ownership to be too high. I'd like to be under the field if it is. Um, I really, I, I, I don't have anything of note in this game. I don't really care too much about the pitching, and I have essentially none of the hitting. Yeah, I, this game is kind of an avoid all around for me. Yeah. You said you're going to have a little bit of Morton, right? Yeah, I got 9% of Morton on my first DK crunch, which is basically just, uh, you know, the variance around a guy with a, a decent start and having to pay up to fill salary. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, got it. just crazy upside as a pitcher in general. It's not a good matchup for him. So I'm not going there, but, I, I mean, I get it. He's going to be low-owned and just has crazy, crazy strikeout stuff at times. Clevenger on the other side is really good against righties. Has been all year. He's been missing more bats lately, but the Astros aren't really a matchup I want to target. And if I was using Astros hitters, or when I use Astros hitters, they're all righties, really. It's the top four, Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa. And I don't want to target righties against Clevenger. So this game is sort of an avoid all around for me. I'm hoping it stays pretty quiet. I agree completely. I have nobody yeah. over one percent as a hitter, so. And we're on the same page. Cool. Rangers and White Sox. Uh, Rangers four point four run implied total. White Sox four point six. It's a fifty one percent chance to win for the White Sox. Matt Moore going for Texas. Carson Fulmer going for Chicago. I don't care for either of these guys. This is all hitting, and in my opinion, it's hitting on the Rangers' side that I want the most. You don't want uh, White Sox hitters here against Matt Moore? Uh, I didn't get a ton of them. I got way more Rangers than I did White Sox. 
So oh. White Sox mm. on FanDuel, it's looking like a little bit of Moncada, Abreu, and Delmonico, but I, I'm hardly getting anything. Moncada, not great against lefties. Yomer Sanchez, not great against lefties. Delmonico, not great against lefties. So it's basically just Abreu and, well, I guess the chance that Matt Davidson hits a home run. Uh, yeah. The White Sox uh, lineup is just not very good. Yeah. Uh, Moncada's actually been okay against lefties this year. Actually, a little bit better than okay. So, I know last year he was, he was pretty awful, but let's see, he's got 38 plate appearances against lefties this year. He's got a 182 average and 15 strikeouts, which, yeah, okay, he's going to strike out against lefties, that is for sure. But he's hitting him hard, and, I mean, it's a lot better than what he was doing last year. He wasn't even hitting lefties hard last year, so. He's got a 562 OPS against lefties this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to okay. go ahead and say that he, he's not that great. No, I it's mean. It's really easy to get a 61% hard hit percentage against lefties when you've only had 37 many, plate appearances. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So he he's not someone I'm just crossing off because he's against the lefty. <laughs> uh, Do you know why it's but, 61%? Why? Because he only has six hits. Six hits? Yeah, yeah he has so... six hits, so his hard hit, like, you know, <laughs> how high could it possibly be? Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> he's just going to strike out a ton against lefties, so. Yeah. I mean, the guys I really wanted to talk about, though, were Abreu, Davidson, and Wellington Castillo. So, not a full stack against Matt Moore. Um, but those guys are all really awesome plays, I think. Davidson, you can play at first or third on DK. Castillo's at a good price, 3,400, smashes lefties. And then Abreu smashes lefties, too, for 4,300. So I really like the White Sox middle of the order. Um, yeah, I got so 2% Moncada, Abreu, Davidson, Castillo. So basically I've got, like, two lines on DK of those four guys. Okay. I, and which that, makes sense fair. to me. I don't have a problem there. I wouldn't even care if that was like more like 4 or 5%. But there's just not a lot to like, even though I hate Matt Moore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the Rangers bats, it's kind of the same guys that I talked about yesterday. Gallo and Mazzara. Um, Fulmer's just going to have a lot of trouble with some of these Rangers lefties. And I think Shields has way more upside in terms of missing bats than Fulmer does. I don't think Fulmer can really miss bats even against the rangers who like dare you to miss bats because they just are not very good at swinging at strikes um so gal and mazara <clears throat> are two guys <clears throat> are two guys that i like wow um You're, you good over there yeah i think so man this cold's killing me um but yeah just gal mazara and chu i think are the guys that i like uh, I have uh, an overwhelming amount of Rangers. They are my second most popular stack on FanDuel, my fifth most popular stack on uh, DK. Uh, the price is just insane on FanDuel. DeShields, 3,100. I'll have an overwhelming amount of him. Chu, 3,000. I'll max him out. Profar, uh, 2,700 for a shortstop. I'll have a ton of him. Uh, Mazzara, Gallo, two guys I'm going to have a ton of. I'll have some Falefa. Odor is 2,600. Like, I'll have a ton of him. Uh, I just I cannot get enough Rangers on FanDuel. Their price is insane. It allows you to do whatever you want. Uh, I just, like, they're going to be really, really popular for me. I, yeah, I don't think... like them as much on DK, but I still have, you know, fifth most, most stack for right now. Yeah, I think they'll they'll definitely get some ownership on both sites, um, but you know I'm not all in on either one of these stacks. I, I they're more outside my top five. I think both of them actually. Um, I'm surprised you don't like the Rangers more against Carson Fulmer. Oh yeah, I, I mean so I don't many like lefty bats with power. Yeah, um, I mean who are you gonna play though outside of Gallo and Mazar? I want power against Fulmer oh, and. Lord. Yeah, but oh door, he he's the worst. Two oh six uh, projected ISO from Steamer, like he's got that's pop for yeah. a second baseman. Yeah, he he does have pop, that's for sure. Uh, it's just a matter of hitting the ball for him. Let's see where I have him in the home run rankings. 
probably pretty low, but... Oh yeah, way down there. That's what happened. Oh, now it's not sorted by home run rate. No wonder he's so damn low. <laughs> Alright, where's Odor? He, I have him at... 51. 48. 48, yeah. So, you know, that's... I mean, I'm sure he's the highest second baseman, if I had to guess. Uh, speaking of second baseman, did you see what Teixeira had to say about uh, Robinson Cano? Yeah, Teixeira should... Not really surprised he was on the gas. <laughs> it's like, fuck, man. It's such a dumb thing to say. Shut up. <laughs> Honestly, be quiet, man. Isn't he in the sport, like, sports media? Like, uh, That might be why he's talking about it, but, like, you can't start your sentence with, like, I love Robbie, but we've all known that he's been on steroids. It's like, man, shut up. Yeah, no, come on. No thieves in this stuff? Come on. Just be like, I can't talk about this. I played with him for five years. Former teammate. Like, dude, have some professional yeah. respect. Yeah, that's, that's... Especially for a guy like Cano. Kick the guy while he's down, too. Like, like if it's some, like, yoked-out slugger, you know, Maguire back in the day or something, would be like, eh, you know. <laughs> like, imagine like, if, if everyone was doing that. There would be, f like, a hundred guys that would come out, like... If people were like, oh, yeah, so-and-so might be on the juice, like, sweet, you know it, but why don't you just quiet down, and if they get caught, they get caught, and it's good for the game, whatever whatever I, people say. I wish it's, they wouldn't test for it. I, I don't, I wish the same, like, it is good for the game, it's it saved baseball 15 years ago, so. It's, and it's base, it's a non-contact sport. So there's no, it's not an injury risk. Like at football, if you're, I mean, these guys are juiced to the gills, but like, you can conceivably die on a football field. Um, sure. You know, you're, you're going to be fine from a baseball perspective outside of fluke stuff. So I hate it. Like, I worry about it in MMA and football. But basketball, baseball, man, inject that shit as much as you possibly can because it makes everything more fun to watch. Home runs are fun. So yeah. that's, yeah. Pro that's why they, it's here. I, I'm just not against it. Like, if they want to do that to their bodies for other people's entertainment, then what are you going to do? Like, could agree more. Yeah. Phillies and Cardinals. Phillies 3.8 run implied total. Cardinals 4.0. It's a 53% chance to win for the Cards. Uh, Jake Arietta going for Philly. Michael Waka going for St. Louis. Uh, I don't really love... I don't really love Waka's price on FanDuel, so I'm not really getting to him, but I'll have a lot of Waka on, on DraftKings. Not looking at Arietta at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Waka will be one of the higher-owned pitchers on the slate because he's 7,200. And going up against a team with a 3.6 total, the Phillies are a pretty good matchup for righties. Um, I just don't think I can do it with Waka. I'd rather go 900 more and get Godley, get someone who I think has a lot of upside by himself, can go out and get 7 or 8 Ks. And I just don't know that Waka has that in him. So it's an ownership thing. Um, I don't think he's that big of a discount on DraftKings. And then Arietta. He's just not missing enough bats for me. Like, he had a good start last time out, but a 5% swing strike rate. So, I'm not really targeting bats or pitchers in this game. Yeah, no bats for me. Um, I think Waka can post up some some Ks here. Althair Ks above average. Uh, Hoskins does. Alfaro Ks in 34% of his uh, plate appearances. Um, the Phillies are... K they're striking out against righties at an above average rate. They haven't been crazy good. They're only 30% hard contact against righties. League average is 35%. So I'm fine targeting Waka here, particularly at that $7,200 price point. Uh, I, I know that I'm going to end up with whatever my max ownership is uh, of Waka tonight. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, just Waka himself, I don't think he's got like huge upside so you know I, I get the play for sure like if you're going by vegas and stuff um and he could pitch well here and maybe even go a k per inning but i'd rather take the what i think is way bigger upside with a guy that's a little bit more expensive and probably lower owned i've got walk at 16.4 dk points what are your thoughts on that i mean if he does that that's that's fine for 7200 right so yeah 
I think that's a pretty fair projection. I think around 14, 15 points is how I would have him projected, somewhere in that range. Gotcha. Yeah. I always like calibrating my uh, my DK stuff off of you because I don't pay attention to it as much. <clears throat> All right, what do you got? One, two, three, four more. Jesus, this fucking slate won't end. The last three are super easy, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? Uh, there we go. Uh, speaking of that last game, um, might start a little late. There's some heavy weather uh, right at around the 8 o'clock time, so they yeah. might start at like 8.30, quarter to 9 type stuff, uh, but I don't see any reason why this game wouldn't happen. Just a little bit of a delay. Anyway. Yep. Yankees, 5.1 run implied total. Royals, 4.0. 62% chance to win for the Yankees. CC Sabathia going for New York. Jacob Junis, who I feel like I say his name every single day, is going for Kansas City. Um, I have none of the pitching in this game. I barely have any hitting. Just a little bit of Yankees stack on DraftKings. Um, but this game is basically like a no-go for me. I think it's mostly just a price thing. Yeah, I'm so I'm confused by the huge total for the Yankees. Like, you, you don't think Junis is some sort of, like, gas can, right? No, I mean, not at all. I he's mean, he's, not, like, yeah. perfectly <clears throat> average-ish. Like, your normal number three-ish starter. That's what I have him as. So I was expecting, like, a total under five. And now, I'm, like, what's your current total at? Five. Uh, 9.1 right now total for me. So uh, the Yankees 5.1 have... one for the Yanks. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing 5.5 on this one. So 5.1 makes a little bit more sense. It's not a huge difference, but just like a, a mental thing for me. Um, I think the Yankees will be low owned. So if you love the spot, go go with the Yankees stack. But I I have Junis being pretty good against righties. Um, doesn't give up a ton of righty power. It looks like uh, he's got a whip under one against righties this year. So uh, I'm kind of off the Yankees. And then I'm off the Royals, really, on the other side. Sabathia is really, really good at limiting hard hits. One guy I do like is Jorge Soler, just because he's been clubbing lefties all year. Yeah, I got one Royals line on DraftKings, and that's it. Yeah, um, I, I get it. If you want to do Gardner, Gregorius, Stanton, Sanchez, that's sort of like the most popular thing I've got coming in out of New York. But ultimately, I'm not really going that direction at all so this game is basically non-existent to me yeah me too all righty rays and angels rays 3.6 run implied total angels 4.2 it's a 57 percent chance to win for the angels lake snell going for tampa nick Tropiano uh, going for the angels i like Tropiano here um I'm going to get a lot of ownership for him on DK, and I'll have a, a solid amount of him on FanDuel. Uh, I like those price points. 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Um, he's a guy I'll use quite a bit as a second starter. Are you looking at Tropiano? I mean, I did look at him a little bit. He's been getting a decent amount of strikeouts, um, but also giving up a lot of hard contact, 45% on the year. And then he's not missing as many bats as I'd like to see him miss. Um, the Rays aren't <clears throat> like that great of a matchup. At least I don't have them being that great of a matchup against either hand. So, I don't know. I'm probably off Tropiano. Do you think he'll be owned? I'm, I'm sure he will be a little bit, but like he's not going to be chalk, right? No, I, that would surprise me. I would I would assume I'll be well over the field on Tropiano. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't hate the play at all. It's a big park, and these Rays don't have big power. So now, 131 I'm not worried about ISO this year against righties for the Rays. Yeah. 161 is league average, so that's uh, putrid. They've got a below 400 slugging. Um, I'm willing to take my chances there. Yeah, I, I don't hate the Tropiano play. I just not someone that I think I'll be on. Snell on the other side is I think he's a really really good pitcher he has been all year um hasn't really had like the Blake Snell game where he just walks everyone and gets blown up <clears throat> I don't I don't think that's coming here excuse me um dude I'm just dying over here uh 
I mean, the Angels do have a bunch of righties, and I mean, can you get to playing Snell? I don't have him at all. Yeah, like his I'd swing have strike Robbie rate. On DK. Me too. That's then, that's probably the problem with him. I'd, I'd rather have a bundle of other guys on FanDuel. Yeah, uh, like the swinging strike rate, the the chase rate, and all that looks great for Snell. I just don't think I can get to him with probably nine righties in the Angels lineup. So, just not the slate for him, I don't think. Yeah, uh, I get a little bit of Angel stack on FanDuel. Trout, in particular, getting the most ownership there. Um, hard to avoid that. Uh, I don't get any Angels on DK, and I don't have any raised bats at all. So, it's it's mostly just Trapiano and a little bit of Angels on FanDuel. But this is not a game that's getting a ton of my exposure. Fair. Me too. I'm kind of avoiding it. Tigers and Mariners. Uh, Tigers, 3.4 run implied total. Mariners, 4.1. It's a 58% chance to win for the Mariners. Michael Fulmer going for the Tigers. Felix Hernandez going for Seattle. Um, I don't mind Felix here at that price point. You know, 3.4 run implied total for the Tigers is, is pretty low. Uh, I'm willing to take my chances on having some exposure to, to Felix. Um, have you looked at him at all? Because I feel like we don't ever talk about him. Yeah, I, I kind of poo-pooed him last night on the night shift. Um, just saying, like, I, I don't really play him. But he's probably someone I'll at least consider throughout the day. Um, I, like, I he's obviously not great anymore, but can miss bats from time to time. And this Tigers lineup is very righty heavy and lots of strikeouts in it. Jacoby Jones leading off, like, he's going to swing and miss as much as anyone. McCann against righties, Hicks against righties, Matuk against righties. These guys all will strike out. So I get it with Felix. Um, he's posted good strikeout numbers the last, like, six starts, it looks like, five or six starts. Uh, the plate discipline stuff isn't as high as I would like it to be, but... He could certainly have a good start here for 7,100. And then Fulmer on the other side, I have a little bit of interest in um, just limiting hard contact so well. And a little bit of an upgrade with no Cano, obviously, as we talked about. Cruz may not be in the lineup too, which might be even a little bit bigger of a boost. And I think Fulmer's been pretty solid. So I don't mind him for 6,100. Yeah. Waka, Hernandez... Pomeranz and Trapiano all within $400 of each other on DK. I feel mm. like they're just going to be a revolving door as my starting pitcher too. So it'll be like DeGrom plus Waka, DeGrom plus Hernandez, DeGrom plus Pomeranz, DeGrom plus Trapiano. Uh, I don't have anything to really separate them. Pomeranz has a 16 point DK projection. Waka and uh, Trapiano are 16.4. Fernandez or Hernandez 16.3. They're all basically the exact same sp- in the exact same spot for me. So I don't really believe in like picking one out of that group. I am going to spread out everything for those four guys, you know, across all of them to give myself a better chance of popping at least one. Uh, so Hernandez is the guy I'm going to have some exposure to along with those other three. And I don't have a single bat in this game once. Yeah, um, man, I don't really either. <laughs> uh, now that you say that, like the revolving door thing, this is a really good night to MME if if your bankroll suits it and stuff. Yeah. So I mean it doesn't even have to suit it. Like I mean I know I mean, this is still a lot of money, but you can max enter the quarter tournament on FanDuel for thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. Um that's always fun to do. And like that if, sounds like you're putting thirty seven fifty out there, but you're also not gonna lose thirty seven fifty <laughs> unless you don't set your lines. So at the minimum you're gonna get like half of that back. Yeah. Um, or you could do like you could even do twenty lineups in the two dollar or whatever. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Like in the four dollar, I I like that a lot. Like the twenty lineups in the four dollar. So do I. On uh, DK. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a pretty good tournament. So I loved it for hockey and yeah. I love that they're keeping it around for baseball. I agree. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean I don't have a problem getting exposure to really any of these guys in these range in this range. So Fulmer and Hernandez are both guys that I would have in my crunch if I was doing that. Like, if Scherzer, if that game wasn't 
uh, likely to get rained out. Scherzer and DeGrom would make up almost all of my starting pitcher one-ish spot. And then they would both just get as much Walker, Hernandez, Pomeranz, and Trapiano as I can to like rotate through all those combinations. I'm mm-hmm. getting six pitchers in that situation in every combination I can get. That's like... I have no confidence in picking out of those four guys. It's a, you know, they're all, it's like 25% chance to be the best pitcher. So what I'm going to do is have all four of them. Yeah. Agreed. Final game. It's one I like. Rockies and Giants. Rockies, 4.3 run implied total. Giants, 4.2. It's a 51% chance to win for the Rockies. Kyle Freeland going for Colorado. Derek Holland going for San Francisco. Uh, No pitching whatsoever here. I have essentially no Giants bats, but I love the Rockies tonight. Uh, They are my fourth most owned stack on FanDuel and my fourth most owned stack on DK. Um... They just line up in the heart of their order really, really well against a left-handed pitcher. Mm -hmm. And Holland's not a guy that you're scared to stack against. The only problem I have with it is the park. Yeah. Um, But we've seen, I mean, we've seen teams score 10 runs even this year in San Francisco. So it's not like it's out of the question. And they will be low-owned against Derek Holland, which I do like. So, I mean, I like Arenado and Story the best. I think that's... That's not a hot take at all. Trevor Story, uh, but I hitter. Yeah, Ionetta and Desmond too. Yeah, like three, four, five, six. Um, it makes sense. I don't. I won't get to it with one lineup, but they're a team that I would have in my crunch for stacks. Like, yeah, <clears throat> that's why I'm like talking myself into MME tonight. So uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I, I might do it. So yeah, I don't have the unnamed. Of, ooh, go ahead. Sorry. I don't have the unnamed. Uh, subscription to your service though so we'll uh, see we'll, we'll talk about that off air if you need to <laughs> um so yeah noel cuevas arenado story desmond Ianetta, uh all look great on dk as part of a stack i do get to charlie blackman quite a bit on DraftKings as just a part of that stack with his high end uh normally i'm not one for lefty lefty but if he's going to be leading off and he's part of three other guys or four other guys that i think are big time righty plays then you just do it but like trevor story at 4100 on DraftKings, 3800 on fanduel like just an exceptional matchup for uh a shortstop and then to get ionetta 3200 against a lefty you know i'm i'm gonna have he's probably the best catcher play on the board right i mean i i think i'd put castillo ahead of him maybe there's i think there's one other catcher that i like i mean i like suzuki a ton um, but yeah, I mean, relative to I salary, know. yes, you know, so I'd rather yeah. have. Oh, Russell okay. Martin, that's the other guy I like a lot. Thirty-two, yeah, yeah, I might be overreacting there a little bit. It's just the park. Like, I love Ionetta against lefties, so I, I'm not gonna like come at you hard for saying that he's your favorite catcher play. Yeah, I don't <laughs> expect the Rockies to be terribly highly owned. That's what I'm sort of excited about. Yeah, and no one really is an AT and T, so yeah, I get it. All righty, and we're we're agreeing no Freeland, no Holland. Nope. Cool. All righty, folks, that's all fifteen. Let's take one look at a DraftKings crunch for right now, and then we'll get out of here. Too many games to look into it. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> If I can get this to load. So give me two pitchers. Um, let's go with my boy, Godly, and... You're going to do this, I, you? Godly and who? I, I don't know who. Who do you think I'm going to pick? I don't even know who I'm going to pick. <laughs> I do. Who? You're not going to do Godly and Gibson here? <laughs> oh, I didn't... I forgot about Gibson. You can try that, yeah. Try out Godly and Gibson. Uh, yeah, didn't get any Godly or Gibson. Well, I think the problem here is that I didn't get any Gibson whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so let's grab Godly. And I'll grab Gibson manually since uh, it's really the only way I can get to him. Hint, hint. You're going to want some Gibson. I think he's he's legitimately good now. It's weird. It makes no sense. Well, it makes sense. I mean, he's 
he's making guys miss and stuff. But that that part makes no sense. All right, here's 20 lines of Zach Godley and Kyle Gibson. Cubs and A's stack. Uh, Twins and Red Sox. Braves and Rockies. Ooh. Braves, <laughs> one, two, three, eight. Rockies, Arenado, Cuevas, Desmond, and Ionetta. That's an... I like that. Yeah. Let's sort this by projected points. Cubs and uh, Rockies looks really nice. Ooh, Braves... Braves A's is nice. Wow. One, two, three, five. One, two, four, six. Yeah. You sure you don't want some Gibson? Positive. <laughs> Positive. Yeah, that Braves A stack does look really good, though. Yeah. No, you could definitely do some stuff with, with I mean, just two mid-tier pitchers like this. Yeah. Um, I'm sure DeGrom and, like, the, the 7K guys will be popular as well. So it'll be the same type of build. Yeah, DeGrom and, I don't know, who would be the guy that I would want the most after DeGrom? Probably Waka. Yeah. I don't know. So that'll be a popular pairing. I mean, spending, what is that, 98 plus 72, 17K on your pitchers. Um, you can do that with a, a combination of a bunch of different guys. I got two lines of uh, DeGrom, Waka in my versus Trapiano. Fuck, that's Trapiano. <laughs> Grom Waka. I didn't get any lines of Degrom Waka in my first hundred. That's weird. Well, it, the problem is it's just Hernandez or Pomeranz or Trapiano since they're all the same. I, I think I don't know. You can really do whatever you want tonight with all these options, especially sure. with Scherzer likely getting the scratch. So. God, you left the house already, or do you just drink out of a Starbucks cup? Oh, I left the house. Whew. What's that like? I don't think I've left in like three days. <laughs> well, I woke up early. I woke up before my alarm, so I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll, I'll get Starbucks, get a huge iced coffee, and sip it during the uh, during the podcast. Show the people what, what real life's like. Yeah, I, just, I went with the uh, 24 <clears throat> ounces of black gold today. Nice, nice. Anything to plug? Hockey? There's a game tonight. Yep, Vegas. The most exciting team in the NHL. Well, maybe not, but uh, definitely a cool story for Vegas. They're up 2-1, and they are playing tonight. Well, I mean, they should be playing tonight. I'm pretty sure it's every other day. So, yeah, they are playing tonight. Um, so they can go up 3-1. They're at home against Winnipeg, who I think Winnipeg's a better team, and I think Winnipeg probably ultimately wins the series, but... They're in trouble if they don't win tonight because this Vegas team is legit. So, I'll have a, I'll have the article out. Um, I mean, I wouldn't recommend playing a ton of money. I think my analysis is good, but these showdown slates are really tough because there's only so many players you can play, and a lot of people have the same combination. So just keep that in mind. But read the showdown article; it will be out early this afternoon. There you go. No basketball, so I don't have anything to talk about there. Just come and hang out with us in the live stream at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll talk uh, baseball and baseball, and maybe we'll just get into a little bit of baseball. Nice. That's everything, people. Uh, best of luck tonight, and we will see you again Monday. So, Monday. Adios, people. <laughs>